Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams of Flat Creek Baptist Church here in Gainesville, Georgia, for another episode of New Horizons. Uh, today, we're going to continue walking through the Passion Week of Jesus. And Jesus today is going to give a history lesson. I don't know about you, but growing up, uh, history was always one of those subjects uh, that I enjoyed. And uh, it, it always enlightened my mind and it always made me realize why things were the way they were. Well, today, Jesus is going to give the religious leaders, the Sadducees, Pharisees, scribes, even some of the Sanhedrin, he's going to give them a history lesson. And not just a history lesson, but he's going to give them prophecy and he's going to do this all in the form of parable. And he's going to do this in the shadow of the cross in the temple complex, knowing that in just a matter of days, he's going to die for the sins of the world. I want you to listen to what happens at the moment, Jesus, his, his authority has been challenged. Remember, he's in that examination period. Now they're looking to see, is there any spot? Is there any blemish? Is there anything we can find against this man in order to justify what we're trying to do to him? Is there any way that we can arrest him? Anything we can find that he's going to say that will cause us to, to be able to, to even kill him and get him off the scene like we want? And now Jesus is going to give a parable right in the middle of that scene. Jesus looks and he tells them this parable. He says, there was a man who planted a vineyard. Understand, in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel is often depicted as a vineyard, God's vineyard. There's a man who planted a vineyard. This lets us in on the clue. He's speaking of the nation of Israel and God's love for them and God's choosing of them. There was a man who planted a vineyard. He put a fence around it. He dug out a pit for a wine press and he built a watchtower. Then he leased it out to tenant farmers and he went away. Those tenant farmers are the nation of Israel, the people themselves. So God has given them, uh, God has chosen them. He's given them a law and he's told these tenant farmers to watch the, watch the vineyard. It's up to them now to keep the law, to do the things of God, that he might show the world how he blesses a nation that follows them. At harvest time, he sent a slave to the farmer to collect the fruit of the vineyard from the farmers. But they took him, they beat him, and they sent him away empty-handed. So the one who owns the farm sends someone to go and get the harvest. But when he gets there, Instead of giving the harvest, they beat him and they throw him out. Now, Jesus goes on and he says, again, he sent another slave. And they sent, and, and, and again, um, they uh, hit him on the head and treated him shamefully. Then he sent another and they killed that one. He also sent many others. They beat some and they killed some. What is Jesus' history lesson Giving here, Jesus is talking about the prophets. So you got the father who planted the vineyard, the nation of Israel. You got the tenant farmers he leased it out to. And he's sending prophets to go and reap the harvest. But as they go to reap the harvest, the tenant farmers are beating them, stoning them, killing them. Just read the Old Testament. You will find that there was no one more unpopular in the nation of Israel than the prophets. They were hated individuals, hated people, and uh, all, all the time they were being come against. Let me just remind you what the book of Hebrews chapter number 11 tells us. The writer of Hebrews says, and what more can I say? Time is too short for me to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength after being weak, became mighty in battle, and put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead. They were raised to life again. Now, that makes the prophet's ministry sound pretty dynamic, and it was, but listen what it says. Some men were tortured, not accepting release, so that they might gain a better resurrection. And others experienced mockings and scourgings, as well as bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They died by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, afflicted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and on mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. You want to know the ministry of the prophet? It was a ministry of hatred. It was a ministry of suffering. It was a ministry that caused great 
pain and affliction and eventually even murder. And Jesus says, you're the tenant farmers of my father's vineyard and everybody he sent down here, everyone he sent your way, you've beat him, you've, you've, you've mocked him, and not only that, but you've killed him. And then Jesus says, listen, but the, the, the vineyard owner still had one to send, a beloved son, finally saying they will respect my son. Jesus now is pointing the finger back at himself. They will respect my son. But those tenant farmers said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him killed them and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. Jesus is pro prophetically telling them what they are about to do to him. The son has come and instead of receiving him because your eyes are on the inheritance, you're going to actually kill the son and throw him out. And so Jesus then turns it right back into their lap again. He says, therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the farmers and give the vineyard to someone else. And, and then he says, haven't you read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This came from the Lord and is wonderful in their eyes. Jesus says, what's the tenant for? What is, what is the owner of the vineyard going to do? He, he's going to destroy those who have now destroyed his son. And he's going to give the vineyard to others. We know the others today are the Gentiles, the church. Because you have rebelled, because you have killed the prophets and the Son of God, there's going to be a new way. And it's going to be open to the Gentiles. And it's going to be salvation in my name. Haven't you heard that the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? And listen what they say. The Bible says, because they knew he had said this parable against them. What should be their response? You would think their response is going to be repentance. You would think they would throw their hands up and say, "We're, you are right this is a history lesson that we needed to know and we will never engage in that activity against you, Jesus, the Son of God, the Lord of glory. But the Bible says that when they knew he was talking about them, they were looking for a way to arrest them. It did not stop their hatred. It only emboldened their hatred. But they wouldn't arrest him because they were afraid of the crowd, so they left him and went away. Friends, they are now on a track and there's no turning back. They have rejected him to the point now where their hearts have been hardened and it's set on one thing and that's to crucify the Lord of glory. May your hearts never become so hard against the Lord of glory, the Son of God, that in your heart you would crucify him and never let him sit upon the throne as Lord of your life. May God bless you and I look forward to seeing you next time on New Horizons.